Hello, this is Bruce Carlin, your town moderator, and another edition of Point of Order, where we try to give you information regarding town meeting and uh, what it's all about. Today we're going to talk about Article 30, which is one of the major articles in the current um, warrant. Uh, I want to just give you uh, our, our guest uh, for this discussion is Elaine Lazarus, our town planner. And um, I want to give it a little context where um, you have 62 articles on the warrant. Uh, the first uh, dozen and a half are about uh, the town budgets. That's the lion's share of what we do. Uh, then we have a few uh, capital items that appear next. And then we get to the planning board articles, and Article 30 is in that group. And uh, I have Elaine here to, uh, for her expertise on uh, what that's all about. Um, welcome to the program. It's nice to have you here, Elaine. Thank you. Nice to be here. Um, I, um, can you give us some context? Well, what are we doing with this article? So just as an overview, the OSMUD was adopted in um, 2008. So, so it's the Open so the, Space Mixed-Use Development Overlay District, which we refer to as the OSMUD. So that, that's a, uh, some sort of uh, uh, zoning. Yes, uh, it's a zoning overlay district that was adopted uh, to cover 730 acres or so. And it was the town's desire to develop that holistically for a mixed-use overlay district. So sometimes when communities are interested in developing a planned community, uh, they'll adopt a, a bylaw like this that addresses it holistically. And there's one master plan special permit that covers the whole district. So once that's issued, it, it's, it's, uh, the other development falls into place. So, so it's holistically planned and designed. This is, uh, this is a fairly recent development in, in zoning. Osmud's, uh, how, how recent has that occurred? Yeah, it doesn't occur very often because you need a big piece typically to do this. Um, so um, it's unusual even for Hopkinton to have a piece this big. And when Western Nurseries was going to be developed, it was an opportunity to do something like this. So uh, it's not that common. How, how do planning boards in general feel about these? I think uh, planning boards in general like them because it's planned. It's planned development. So planning board, it, planning is, is good, and so it enables the town to do some planning in advance and then to follow through with what, what they expect. So then development just proceeds as expected, and it's not unplanned, unforeseen. You can plan for it. Um, do you have... Uh, in the context of what the planning board does for the year, we've, I don't know how many articles you have, I forget the count, um, what portion of your time does it take to, to uh, manage something like this? Well, the whole zoning process starts in uh, August, September with the Zoning Advisory Committee. So uh, I'm working um, on it pretty consistently from August through, through town meeting. Uh, so it, it takes up a lot of time, but it involves a lot of public input, a lot of public meetings, so there's a lot of public discussion that goes along with it, which is very good. Okay, well, I, I think we've got good context here um, for uh, our additional guests. We've got um, some, uh, um, uh, Roy McDowell, who is our developer uh, of that particular plot, and we have Frank Durso, who uh, is, uh, Frank, why don't you come on in here and uh, uh, give us your bona fides. Where are you working uh, now? Yeah, I'm I don't on the know. planning board now. Yeah, and are you also on uh, uh, some other committees as well? I have well? recently been on Conservation Commission from 2010 to, to 2014. And, uh, and Roy McDowell, you're uh, with Legacy yes, Farms. Uh, Legacy. Yeah. I should preface my comments. I, I'm a member of, member of the planning board, but my comments or opinions are my own. Are, are not, you're not representing the planning board in what you're saying now. But so what we're hoping is that uh, uh, the, in the context of what we do at, at um, town meeting is that we're going to be able to have a, a good discussion about the pros and cons of this particular way of developing the uh, the property, and 
Uh, can you tell us just a little bit more about what we're hoping to do with Article 30, Elaine? This article would uh, raise the cap on the number of dwelling units can be on the property uh, by 180, and these would be age-restricted, over 55 units. Um, they would be um, allowed in the commercial subdistrict on the north side of Legacy Farms. Um, and 10% um, of them would be affordable to make sure that we, we keep that percentage percentage there. And there's a couple of little housekeeping items in the article as well, but the main thrust is to uh, have that uh, 180 additional units in the commercial sub-district of Legacy Farms. Okay. Um, Roy, why don't you tell us why, uh, why this works? Sure. Tell, give us the good news. Great. And yeah, Bruce, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, we have spent a lot of time, as you know, since 2007 working with Elaine and the planning board and the various other agencies in town on the master plan and the Osmond for Legacy Farms. And what's amazing is after seven years, probably 90, over 90% 90 of the project is exactly as planned originally with the planning board. So what we're proposing, uh, relatively speaking, is, is a, a minor change on a parcel in the north side of Legacy which is approximately 25 acres of area that currently is zoned to build up to 200,000 square feet of commercial space. Now there are about 25 things one can do under that various type of zoning, some by right, some with a special permit, whether it be offices, retail, commercial, uh, storage, manufacturing, light manufacturing, medical offices, a litany of things. Um, and this, this is a plan right here that actually shows the north side of Legacy. This particular version of the plan shows it with housing on that commercial component. The piece we're referring so to is um, upper left-hand corner. Okay. That area right there. Now, the reason we believe that doing this for age-restricted housing as opposed to commercial has tremendous benefits to the community as a whole, to the neighborhood itself, for a number of reasons. One is from a tax revenue point of view, and again, this is from not our numbers, but the town's consultants, the generation of net revenue on a commercial basis on that particular parcel would be $160,000 a year. Under our proposal, doing uh, age-restricted over 55 housing, that parcel with some adjustments in the number of single-family homes in the project would bring the net revenue to $1.5 million a year net. So we're talking about five, excuse me, $1.5 million versus $160,000, a huge delta, point one. Point two, significantly less traffic. We all know commercial properties generate more traffic than residential. The numbers are uh, projected to be up to 74% less traffic for this particular component of the project for the age restricted as opposed to the uh, commercial component and significantly less peak hour traffic, which is what we all worry about, whether it be 7 to 9 in the morning or 3 to 5 at night, significantly less traffic. The other nice feature here is there'll be no school-aged children attributable to the budget, so it won't have an effect on school children. If anything, it'll be slightly less school children because we're eliminating the 35 single-family homes, four- and five-bedroom homes on the north side, and that will be sprinkled through the two- and three-bedroom condominiums. So when we look at the big picture of less traffic, significantly more revenue, no negative impact on the school systems, I think it's a very, very wise proposal. Uh, uh, thanks, that's a, a wonderful re uh, uh, review. Uh, Frank, you have some objections. And what, yeah. what, what do you think the cons are uh, of this? Uh, the first thing, um, we'll go in order, I guess. Uh, that's the picture we're looking at. That's Wilson Street on the left. Uh, the oh, you, okay, <laughs> Wilson Street there. Uh, the commercial space is, uh, seven years ago we agreed at town meeting that uh, the commercial space uh, would be an important component of this, and that's what passed at town meeting. Uh, this measure came up last year and, and failed, and, and one of the reasons uh, that I, I support I'm against it is because I think that the commercial space is a key part of what a lot of people voted for seven years ago. And I know times change. Uh, nothing's been developed there because the process of building and developing Legacy Park, uh, Legacy uh, South occurred, now you're doing Legacy North, 
and you're saying seven years uh, later, maybe the commercial space isn't as viable as senior housing. Um, but the reason I oppose making this change is that I think you should stick to the original plans and have commercial space because Wilson Street is going to be a lot more accessible uh, for traffic, uh, for rush hour traffic, because the Legacy Park uh, North Road is we called the bypass road in, in previously. Uh, we'll take a lot of traffic off of uh, 135 and bring it onto uh, Wilson Street and onto uh, Route 85. Um, so that will eliminate a lot of traffic from Route 135 if people are going to uh, work there. Uh, if we have uh, dense population density that close to the gas tanks, I'm a little concerned because the gas tanks are a concern. We shouldn't be putting houses so very close to that area. Uh, it's more of a concern if you have uh, 180 age-restricted homes packed right into uh, an area that close to the gas tanks uh, so, uh, is a worry. Let me, uh, let me understand a little bit. So uh, one of your opposition points mm -hmm. uh, is, is that we've lost the commercial space. I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying about the, the last Retaining time. the commercial space is, uh, why, why is, is that key critical? to uh, people who voted seven years ago uh, have mentioned to me, one of the concerns is we want to work to increase the commercial tax base and reduce the residential tax base. Uh, and this is kind of taking a step backwards from that. Sure, there's other benefits for taxes. You can tax more condos, the more condos there are, but we're not putting a you know, 100 foot tower of condos in there either. I mean, we could make more money off of that. The town's not about making money. The town's about conserving and planning our, our, our Okay, so uh, I, I just want to get your, your points clean. Um, so you, you think that there's loss of commercial space and you think that the proximity I, to the tanks is an issue? I think the original plan to put office space there is more viable and safer for people. Uh, if they're working, if there's a problem with the gas tanks, you know, that's, we're all in trouble. Uh, but I think it's less of a calamity if, if, it's, a, if it's an office space. Uh, maybe an office doesn't, maybe nothing belongs there. Right now it's, it's a nice field uh, for growing things. Uh, but if we're going to put anything there, we've agreed seven years ago to put office space there. Uh, office space uh, in that area will work as well as uh, Liberty Mutual's office space, which is you know, a few, few blocks to the east. Point. Um, Liberty Mutual is right there, yeah. Uh, they have uh, just as much uh, space as we're talking about and just as many workers that, as we'd be concerned about. Uh, right now they drive on Franklin Road on Route 135 and uh, that's not a problem. Uh, so I'd like to retain the original plan from seven years ago to put office space in there, bring more jobs to Hopkinton and increase the commercial tax base to reduce the residential tax base. Uh, another concern I have is uh, on this mailer you, you've distributed, which is, you know, it looks very nice and everything, but Really, you're, you're swapping the, the office space for 180 uh, age-restricted homes, and it's pretty much a one-for-one -one, uh, swap. Uh, if you go over through everything, you balance on the left and the right, what's, what's different, and that's, that's the major difference. And do we really need 180 additional homes in Hopkinton? Uh, Legacy Park South is, um, in my opinion, it's what we planned for, but we could have been a little bit more careful in our planning. I was on the Conservation Commission when we were discussing the Alta apartments, and uh, we gave them a little bit more extra room uh, within the 100 foot buffer for one of, the, one of the units, and we should have maybe stuck to our guns and, and kept them out of the 100 foot buffer. Uh, and the, their, their argument was, well, we'll save some trees on one side. And if, if you're, my, my point you're, is, I think you're getting away from my what point is, the legacy to say south is a little bit more built than what people so maybe you're assume. saying that we have there's more population here than we had envisioned, and that's your objection. I, I th what, what I'm hearing from people is they look at legacy farms. I'm calling it legacy park. Uh, look at legacy farms, and it's it's larger and more inhabited than we thought it would be. Well, in black and, and white, on it, paper. yeah, in black and white it's one thing, and in real life it's another. So uh, neighbors nearby have told me enough is enough. This is the agreement from seven years ago. Let's, let's, let's hold them to that. And I, I'm in agreement with that. 
I think adding in uh, 180 more units to this, this project isn't what we agreed to seven years ago. Times have changed and uh, commercial space isn't viable. Then you've waited seven years. If you wait seven years more, maybe it will be viable again in the future. Uh, the business in Hopkinton is about technology. It's about uh, science and, and uh, this is a perfect area to have a nice office space where just like Liberty Mutual where they're doing uh, science and testing of, of safety devices. So if I understand your uh, objection is it's the added population density mm -hmm. uh, to, the, to the town and uh, the loss of, uh, of additional commercial space and you think that it should stick to the old uh, so it's an original plan. Okay. Uh, if the gas tanks were there or not, I have a problem with the density being you know, adding 180 units. The gas tanks being there, I have a problem with anything being built too close to there. Uh, I wish I was more aware of the problems with, with the gas uh, tanks and their systems. They're updating their, what, they, what they have there, but I'm not very happy with the, the way they're going about that, and I don't want to put additional people at risk. Um, you know, who, who's responsible if we put people too close and there's a problem? This is the kind of discussion that we're hoping we have at town meeting where, uh, uh, where it's just, here's what I think is the pro, here's what I think is the con. Uh, let's talk it out and, uh, and let's discuss. Uh, Roy, you have uh, some rejoinders to that. Yes, and Frank, I, I appreciate your point of view. Uh, I'm a little surprised in that you were such an aggressive uh, proponent of changing zoning on the west side recently of Hopkinton for a uh, this is now, is now, again, let's get, no, keep no, it away from, saying is, uh, know, to take from the, the personal. Point, to take the point of view of not wanting to change zoning because it's currently existing, uh, the, the thing that's very important when you look at this commercial component, some people, when they don't understand this component of the commercial, thinking, gee, we're going to do away with retail, that's not the case. Retail was never planned for this portion of the project. And to say it's, it's uh, not viable, actually, it's, it's very viable for litany of commercial uses. We just don't think those are the right uses for that parcel, given its location. And the fact that we say we want to maintain a commercial base for tax purposes, the taxes for this purpose that we're proposing is nine times, nine times, not twice, nine times the net revenue to the community you, with significantly less traffic. Roy, could you go into, you, you made a comment just then that um, uh, it's not appropriate, uh, that, that kind of commercial development, I'm not, I can't remember your sure. exact words. How do you make those decisions as to what's good and what's not? And then I'd like to hear Frank's opinion sure. about what's good or what's not about sure. the, um, why you put something one place or another. Sure. Now, there's no question when the original master plan was dealt with, and Elaine was very involved in that, there was a mix of uses for a number of reasons. One is to have some retail, some commercial, and another reason was to have a mix of uses from a tax point of view to generate revenue because certain things are negative to revenue, certain things are positive. Commercial is positive, but the one thing that's even more positive is something like an age-restricted community where you don't have school children. Now, if we eliminate the 200,000 square feet of commercial on the north side, we're still maintaining commercial retail uses on Main, East Main Street right along 114 East Main Street or in front of 83 East Main Street and at the Village Center, which we've been working very closely with the Mezzet family long term to do commercial and retail there. So we're still going to be maintaining commercial and retail uses along East Main Street. We're proposing on this upper northwest corner not to have commercial. So you're, you're just saying that in your planning you, you figured that the main, the main Street uh, and, uh, commercial was a, a, uh, a better bang for your buck, can well, I say? Well, it's not so much a better bang for our buck. It, it, what happens is the marketplace tells you what it wants. Mm -hmm. And the marketplace has told us for a long period of time, if you're going to do retail or something that needs traffic, 135 East Main Street is really where retail should go. Right now the traffic count there is about 15,000 cars a day. And believe it or not, as busy as we think it is, Retailers would say, gee, we'd like it to be busier. 
So one of the reasons we haven't done any retail yet is people want to see more rooftops. They want to see more homes, more, more population so to Frank, justify retail. Frank, uh, uh, you know, what, what would you say to that? What, uh, what goes, uh, well, we're why would you We're not talking about retail. The retail is not even changing in, in, your, in your plan. We're talking about the office space. Uh, uh, talk to the plan. It's not his plan. But, okay. The, the uh, commercial office space uh, on the north side of, of this project, uh, well, I'm looking at it as taking less traffic. We're talking about 180 age-restricted homes with at least one car for every home uh, maybe more, probably more, uh, is going to generate more traffic throughout a day than an office park with, you know, 200 workers. I mean, uh, the same thing happens with Liberty Mutual. And if you look on the map there, uh, they're on Franklin Road. So this is Liberty Mutual. And, you know, they, uh, there's no issues with additional traffic from them adding in the legacy Farms North Road as a bypass road, retaining the commercial space as an office space, I, I think is the best use, as we agreed seven years ago. Uh, talking about other areas of town, I was a proponent of improving and increasing commercial space. Uh, and it was a competing project for yours, so I'm, I'm, I'd like to think I'm fair for every project. I look for what I think is best for the town. And I talk to a lot of people in town, and uh, feedback I get, the, n the best statement I've heard is enough is enough. We don't need 180 additional units in town. And if it's, if it's a question of uh, if you can have a successful commercial project there or not, you, you've said tonight, today, this morning, that you can. So I'd like to have you hopefully have you stick to that plan and and we hopefully town meeting won't make this change like we didn't make it last year and i think it's important to bring good jobs to hopkinton professional jobs the retail jobs support the professional jobs but we, we need, really need a mix of both and i don't want to see the removal of an office park that uh we need to look forward in, in our town and just adding homes isn't going to make, uh, it's just going to add people, and the population density is getting a little bit thick. Uh, Elaine, when you do this on, and, uh, from a, a planner's point of view, um, is there, uh, uh, on an OSMA, uh, do these changes happen frequently, or, or what, what's the, uh, how, how does this go? I just don't know what Osmonds look like. There's no general rule, and I think, you know, as l during the passage of time, as time goes on, as there's more likely to be change because things do change over time. So the longer something is under development, the more likely there is that there'll be a change proposed. Well, uh, this has been an excellent discussion, and I'm sure it's going to be continued right through town meeting. Uh, I'd like to hear if you have some final comments. So I'll start with you, Roy. Sure. Well, thank you very much again, Bruce, for having me, and Elaine, thank you for coming. And Frank, I appreciate the back and forth. It's, it's always good to have a healthy conversation. Uh, we just think this is the wise thing for Hopkinton. Forget us as a developer. If you look at the revenue that this is going to generate significantly to the town on a year-to-year -year basis, the taking the pressure off a school system because of additional revenue. I didn't mention the $1.8 million we'd be giving the town for downtown improvements, for the trail system throughout town, and additional monies being available for life safety for the fire department and other agencies in town. So I think the one-time payments are a big item. I think adding additional affordable housing in Hopkinton is a big item and of course less traffic and more revenue. So I think these are all very positive things. Thank you very much, Roy. Uh, Mr. Frank Durso. Uh, well, some of those things you're talking about, you'd be paying for anyways. Uh, yes? Well, no, no, no. All right. uh, final comments here. Well, I, I, think, I think highly of Roy. Uh, I've known him since this project began, and he's always been responsible uh, to the neighbors. Uh, and uh, responsive to concerns, and I appreciate him being here. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it at the rest of the town meeting. Okay, well, uh, that wraps it up for another edition of uh, Point of Order. And uh, our guests tonight have been Roy McDowell from Legacy Farms, 
Frank Durso, uh, representing an uh, 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 opposing point of view, but a member of our planning board, and our esteemed town planner, Elaine Lazarus. Thank you, Elaine. You're welcome. And thank you all. Thank you very much. Hello, I am Marie Smith, and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition, and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free, and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participate in nominating your HHS grad. Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth.